and read the papers that you have to kind of uh, <laughs> propose. So that's a belief that we all have, I think. Um, so I interesting, yeah. No, but you are a stalwart when it comes to education and your principles, your policies, the way you're implementing, you know, oh. and even the rural. Yes, myself. Yeah. So, Rita, you're a stalwart in, uh, as such, and the way you're doing all those good things, you have a special school in the evening for people who need you. Thank you so much. You have been training uh, government school teachers. What not? You've done everything. You've done so much. <laughs> I think uh, time is always short when you really want to do something. Yes, Continue to do. And Rita yes. Ji, we're looking on your support, uh, you know, for this Thank initiative you. as well. Lot of ideas, lot of work to yes. be done. Always, so, always, you. definitely, definitely. So I'm just looking into the chat to see who else is there who can come. Guljot, would you like to say something? You are an aggressive worker always. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. I'm actually traveling back from a summit that I was in, and uh, but I could not miss joining. Thank you so much for having me. I uh, just wanted to share, as Samaj sir was saying, that he wanted somebody from some schools from rural area. So today only I tied up with a gentleman. I've requested him to join. He is from Shah Jahanpur and he is yeah. working with the students there, a couple of students and ladies. And he is t giving the technical education to the students there. He's running an NGO. So he has Fantastic. around 50 students. So uh, he was on his way back. I hope he joins us today online. Otherwise, yes. I'm going to uh, definitely add him to the project and um, would motivate him to work with us. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I think that's that's very, very good to know. Uh, and we have and uh, Mr. Texera also joining in. OK. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon. Good evening. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, we all here and thank you so much and we are honored and so happy to have you here, sir. I'm very happy to be part of this initiative. I'm just trying to get more luminosity in here so you can see me better. Okay, sir. Right, yes. sir. We have, and, my pleasure. Uh, and Mr. Yeah. Texera, we, we, we do have lighthouses here. All Everyone is a, is a shining lighthouse. So yes. we get a lot of illumination from here as well. But <laughs> very glad to see Dr. Satya Bhushan as well joining us from NCRT. Sir, Good thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking out time. Welcome, sir. Thank you, we have. Oh, that's so nice to see you, sir. Thank you so much for joining. Namaskar. Bhot, bhot dhanyavad aapko. Namaskar, sir. So we have uh, Lauren, Lauren, Lauren from USA. Yes, please. If you could say hello to everybody around here. Hi, how are you all? It's nice to see you. Thank you for inviting me. Nice to see you. Thank you so much, Lorraine, for joining us. And we've heard such great things. We have seen such great things. And we are hoping to hear great things today from, from your work. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And, and we have Professor uh, Yoshiro. So yes, Professor, if you can unmute yourself and say hello to everybody. They're doing wonders. <laughs> Hello, I'm. Um, uh, thank you for inviting me, and uh, I'm very excited to be part of this uh, exciting event. Um, thank you, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Joins us from Japan, yes. and uh, very, very glad to have you at this forum, sir. So another five minutes um, yes. before we start. We have Gita also here, right, Gita? Yes, yes, yes. I'm just trying to get my video on. It's okay. Take your time. No issues. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just going through the chat and I'm just, you know, just saying hello to everybody around. That's it. Yes. Paramji ji, good, uh, good to see you. And good to see Mr. Samarth again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think we've all been old, uh, old timers now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, that's there. Hanumant is there and um, Gita Ji, old timers, hence more responsibility. 
Yes, that's <laughs> it. The BCA connection, British Council connection also now here. Yeah. Anybody else would like to say hello? You're welcome. We have four minutes to go before we start. Hello all, I think I can pitch in at this time. Greetings to one and all present here. I'm very glad to be on the panel. As you can see, I'm the youngest and the most naive, I would use the word if I'm right, on the panel. And I'm honored to be here. And I'm looking forward to all the conversations and engagement we'll have today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Meda. So Aya Paraj, all the way from down south. Come on, say hello to everybody. Hi. Good evening, everybody. This is Ayyam Paraj from uh, Salem, Tamil Nadu. It's a great pleasure being uh, with this pro uh, project, especially being uh, my all the mentors are here. So looking forward to uh, collaborate with all the people. Samrat sir, thank you so much uh, for giving this opportunity. No, no. Looking thank forward you. to see and work together upcoming uh, months. Right. Hi. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Absolutely. And one, I would also like to share that uh, Mr. Texera uh, heads the UNODC regional office for South Asia. And uh, he was previously the in charge of the entire, uh, you know, the Doha Declaration. I think, Marco, you, you, should, you should come in. Yes. Yes, thank you. No, no, it's I think it's a journey of continuity. And of course, I'm very happy that we are starting together with all of you this journey. Some more familiar with our work, some more in the expectation what we can do together. From my side is the word of hope that we can build together. Absolutely. And hope lives, sir. Hope is That's alive. A <laughs> That's a beautiful way to put it. <laughs> So we look into the the mic also, Team KNPS, in case you find some, some mic is on so that we don't have background sound or something. Look into it, please. And the and the admit also at the lobby fast. So that there we can see you, Gita. So nice. Ashish sir is also there. Ashish, would you like to say hello? Hello, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Mr. One Samad, to go. Mm. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Mr. Texera and Samad, I just wanted to introduce this young guy who just said hi. He's the one who will be uh, taking this particular initiative along for the Indra Pram group of institutions. Lovely, lovely. That's that's great and good to connect. And I also welcome Mr. Dhillan, Himat uh, Dhillan from the Lauren oh, School, lovely. Sanar. I uh, think hi, Himat sir. Hi, Dhillan, sir. How are you? Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Mr. Parkak. Good evening, Mr. Texera. Good evening, Mr. Bhushan. <laughs> Dr. Amna. Madame. Good evening. Right. Mr. A, a warm welcome to you. Is it is it is it warm in Sanar or cold? I've no, heard that no, it's, it's quite chilly. Quite, quite chilly. chilly, but nice, pleasant. Right. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. This is Anupam Sharma from Indrapuram Public School, Indrapuram. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are. Yes, Anupam. Thank Good you evening. for joining. Good evening, everybody. I'm so excited uh, to be a part of this project. Last time when we participated in Rise Up for Global Goals project, our students learned a lot. Even our teachers, everybody got, you know, enriched and we learned a lot that time. And this time also, I'm really, really excited because it's, it's about peace. It's about, it's a chance to, you know, learn 
peace, justice, and strong institutions, and these values are very dear to my heart. And I hope a great journey together with all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anupam. And there goes the clock tick six, and we start. <clears throat> so, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe good morning and good afternoon also, because we have educators, professors, college students, the youth uh, from colleges, from universities, everybody has joined in from all around the globe. Thank you so much for joining Rise of Puppies Education Initiative, empowering educators and inspiring young minds on SDG 16 and the rule of law. Ladies and gentlemen, this project starts in January when we did lots of planning and it goes up till December. And today, when uh, today every year, you know, uh, February 23rd is observed as the World Peace and Understanding Day. And look, our project Rise Up for Peace is also launched on the same day. And this is uh, the learned members who are going to be part of this project and uh, during the launch time. Yes. As we move ahead, and everybody knows uh, Samal Patak, he is the moderator of the day, and two of us, we are going to move ahead. Samal, if you can take over from here, and the floor is yours now. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Dillon. On behalf of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, I thank all of you for joining us today as we together rise up for peace as equal partners. Today marks the beginning of a transformative journey towards strengthening education on SDG 16, peace, integrity, and the rule of law. This is critical because learning about these themes from an early age can be truly transformative. For many children, for many young people, the first encounter they have with public institutions is by entering a school. And as such, educational institutions are where the foundational values to create better citizens are built. Our young are today Back. growing in an hello sorry. Our young are today growing in an increasingly turbulent world, one that faces violence, uncertainties, inequalities, climate and health risks, threats from drugs and crime, and other vulnerabilities. This requires our urgent attention, and therefore. Education on SDG 16 is no longer an option, but a necessity. This should include enabling young people and making them more resilient to these challenges. Through education, we must help our students better understand the consequences of crime and risky behaviors and the importance of justice and the rule of law. We must help them develop a sense of purpose, ethics and empathy. We must help them ideate and use their skills to create solutions and experience and reflect on the social impact of their actions and on their thoughts. Finally, we must help them promote their efforts and their voices. And Rise Up for Peace is an endeavor in this direction. Our core objectives are clear, building capacities of educators with trainings and tools, fostering cross-learning to share good practices and expertise, engaging young people with interactive dialogues, activities, and projects, empowering them to act with integrity and promote peace and lawfulness in their communities, and co-creating interventions and initiatives in schools and promoting them, showcasing them more actively. With Rise Up for Peace, I believe the catalyst of our efforts will be the power of peer-to-peer -peer influence guided by educator mentors. We are looking at creating impact that goes beyond numbers to actual positive changes in attitudes, behaviors, and personal resilience. But the success of Rise Up for Peace hinges on our collective commitment. We cannot afford to work in silos. We have to work together to champion this effort. At the moment, we have educators, educational leaders, policymakers, and young people who are joining in. Ms. Dillon would be able to share more light on this, but in a short span of about a couple of weeks, we have had over 500 educational leaders joining in and more than 11,500 young people in this journey. So as we begin this journey, I urge each of you to remember the faces of the young people that we seek to empower. 
in the eyes of every child lies the potential for greatness for compassion for creating a world that is safer peaceful inclusive and just that's the world we should be building and that's the world that every young person truly deserves so let's work together to be the champions they want and the mentors and the advocates they seek and together let's transform sdg 16 from being sustainable development goal 16 to schools driven goal 16 because for us at UNODC rise up for peace is more than an initiative it is a promise to our young people that we will keep thank you very much and a special gratitude again to ms paramjit dhillon and her remarkable team at knps fagwara they are the powerhouse behind this collective effort back to you ms dhillon Thank you so much for the time to introduce the keynote speakers. Uh, first of all, we have uh, Mr. Marco Texera, Regional Representative, UNODC Regional Office for South Asia. Welcome, sir. Honored to have you. Our uh, another uh, next important keynote speaker is Dr. Ram Shankar, Director Training, Central Board of Secondary Education, Delhi, India. Sir, from a CBSE school, so delighted to welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We have a keynote speaker, Dr. Satya Bhushan, Assistant Professor, Statistics, International Relations Division, NCERT, Delhi, India. Thank you, sir, for joining us. We have the NCERT book right from class one to class ten. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. For, for being here. And now over to the panelists who are going to be there with us. Welcome, Mr. Himmat Singh Dhillon, Headmaster, the Lawrence School, Sanawar, India. We are we are honored, sir, to have you amongst us. Moving on, we have Ms. Geeta Jain, Principal, Chaman Bharati School, Bangalore, India. Thank you, Geeta, for being part of this all important launch session. Thank you, Ms. Paramjit. And then now comes the time, Ms. Rita Singh, whom uh, I think I've been knowing her since ages, a stalwart, as I keep saying for her. Uh, she's a pillar of strength for so many of us. She is the CEO of Indirapuram Education Network and Director of Indirapuram Group of Institutions. Thank you, Rita, for being part of this all-important launch session. And then we move out of our country. We go to Japan now. We have Yoshiro Miyata, a professor from Chukyo University, Toyota, Japan. Thank you, sir. We are looking forward to listen about your peace song project. <laughs> And moving on, that's Miss Lauren Leo. World Peace Song Project uh, USA. She's a coordinator, and she's a wonderful person. When she talks, I'm sure she'll win over all the hearts around here. Thank you, Lauren, for being part of this wonderful launch session. Thank you. And then the young uh, girl, the powerhouse, uh, you know, the the world rests on your shoulders. The youth of the country, the youth of the global youth. We have Medha Tushti, youth advocate. Let's see what she is going to talk about today. And now comes the time when I welcome the keynote speaker of the day, Mr. Marco Texera, Regional Representative UNODC Regional Office for South Asia. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. I just want to confirm if I'm audible. Yes, sir. So namaste and a good evening and or a good afternoon or good morning to the participants. We are almost reaching with our guests, with educators and partners, almost 150 participants. For I think it's an auspicious start. And of course, from my side, it is an honor to join such a distinguished audience. And I'm looking forward to see your sharing, your ideas, your reflections on how we can actually make this launch a journey of continuity. Rise up for peace. It's more than one time event. It's a journey and I'm very gl glad that we are embarking this journey together. So I'll start with a special thanks to Ms. Panajuti Dillon and the team at Kanla Nero Public School Pangara. All of your educators and partners gives us the strength 
the hope, the motivation to continue this journey. And of course, a special thanks to my team and, and Samad Patek for his support, leadership and together putting us in this collective journey with young people that they are the catalytic and the catalytic for change. I'm truly uh, thrilled to witness the responses, the participation, and obviously the willingness to unite our efforts in a mission to strengthen education on peace, integrity, and rule of law. I also use this opportunity to warmly welcome Dr. Ram Shankara, Director of Training at CBSA, and Dr. Santaya Bruchan, Associate Professor in International Division at RNSCT, for joining us and for your continued support. For us, your leadership matters, and naturally we count on your support and your guidance and collaboration on this collective journey. I'm also glad to see familiar faces, and of course, Mr. Ilmat Dillon, Ms. Gita Jayant, Ms. Rita Singh, Mr. Joshiri Miata, Ms. Lorraine Leo, and our young champion. And of course, you are, and you will be part of the driving force of this initiative, Ms. Medra Tusti. At UNODC, we believe it is the need of an hour to prioritize peace, justice, and of course, rule of law in education. Not only to engage, but also to enable and empower young people, the younger generation. Today, we cannot ignore the reality that young people are often vulnerable to drugs, crime, risky behaviors. And it's based on that reality check that we believe that only with education, especially on the Sustainable Development Goals and its Sustainable Development Goal 16, in particular, we can stand together to protect and empower children and youth to understand and exercise their individual rights to make sound ethical judgment decisions, to actually challenge injustice and promote fair societies. It is also enrichment for us and an additional layer of hope that when you look into Indian National Education Policy 2020 and the curriculum framework under them, that national education policy, it is obviously very clear, the direction, the principles, and the collective wish. And uh, in the G20 presidency, we also heard the government of India, the prime minister of India, and the world leaders to emphasize the need for young people not only to be the recipients, but the actors of a collective change to the better future, to be drivers of development and peace in the spirit of the Sustainable Development Goals. At the Global Front, the Kyoto Declaration is a powerful testament of our collective commitment, highlights the critical role of youth and youth empowerment to foster peace, security and stability. From, and from analyze, analyzing the setup of the UN Youth Office, that so also shows our global commitment as United Nations. And from our side, as UNODC, we will continue to prioritize efforts towards youth engagement to be part of the overall UN approach and our priorities. Allow me also to mention that the Rise Up for Peace is our response, our collective response. Uh, to this call, we come together to empower young people and with knowledge and values to be active actors of change. To this end, we have pioneered in the past and we spearhead different initiatives through Education for Justice, Grace Initiatives, and we have developed, and we want to further disseminate peer-to-peer -peer initiatives and collective learning, pedagogical tools to prevent crime, violence, and corruption, and promote the cultural lawfulness, and of course, continue to support the exercise of educating at primary, secondary, and tertiary levels. In India, we have built capacities of educators, empower students with active-based learning, and I think Samart could not set the stage better than this. We want to continue to capitalize on peer-to-peer -peer learning, creating networks, provide a positive frame for action, and of course, empower educators to also enable their students to flourish. 
An example of some of those initiatives is Lockdown Learner series that we are spearheading here in India, and then Samart was a life witness of our efforts collectively with other educators, and is based looking at the past that we base the proactive thinking for the future. Rise Up for Peace is more than an initiative. It is for us a call for action to equip educators, young people with the necessary tools of values that we need to shape a better world based on peace, integrity and justice, because all of you educators are architects of the society and shaping the mind of the future leaders that our youth will be. So today I stand very proud to be among you and reaffirm our United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and wavering commitment to this initiative to supporting educators through Rise Up for Peace. And of course, not just only offering trainings, cross-learning activities, but also a meaningful partnership involvement with all of you. And let's hope in the upcoming months, we pass from an idea to a hope and to an action. And of course, the presence of you today, it is my expectation that the hope will become a reality. So thank you very much and a useful discussions upcoming. And thank you for being in this journey with us. Over to you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it was a pleasure to listen to you. And yes, our hope is going to come into reality. It would surely turn into reality. Miles to go, but the hope would be there turning into reality. Thank you so much. And now I request and invite our next keynote speaker, Dr. Ram Shankar, Director, Training, Central Board of Secondary Education, Delhi, India. Sir, we honored, privileged to have you amongst us. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, sorry, due to some technical issue, I am not able to uh, start my camera. Please bear with me. So, uh, good evening, esteemed guests, educators, and partners. Uh, it is an honor to be here today at the launch of Rise Up for Peace, an initiative that holds tremendous promise for our educational landscape. Thank you to Mr. Samarth Pathak and uh, Ms. P.K. Dillanji for convening us today. I am glad to join you here for unveiling of Rise Up for Peace, a collaborative effort uh, between UNODC, Kamla Nehru Public School, Phagwara, and other esteemed educator partners. Uh, such collective efforts are much required towards fostering peace, integrity, and the rule of law through education. I welcome this initiative and happy to extend support to this initiative. At the heart of the Rise Up for Peace is a recognition of the intimate connection between education and SDG 16, which emphasizes peace, justice, and strong institutions. If you see the India's National Education Policy 2020, which also echoes this sentiment and emphasizes the need for holistic education that nurtures not just academic excellence, but also ethical values, integrity, and a deep understanding of the rule of law. Uh, in our rapidly changing world, the need for education on peace, integrity, and the rule of law has never been more pressing. We see the efforts of conflict, corruption, and injustice in various facets of society. By empowering our youth with knowledge and values, we equip them to become catalysts for positive change. I believe that uh, uh, central to the impact of Rise Up for Peace would be the recognition that educators are frontline champions of this cause. At CBSE, when I say CBSE, actually this is family of more than 29,000 schools and 14 lakhs teachers. So we believe that these teachers, educators, play a very, very important role in shaping young minds, instilling in them the values of peace, integrity, and respect for the rule of law. However, to effectively impart these essential lessons, educators themselves require support, resources, and last but not least, that is proper trainings. <laughs> I'm happy to note uh, 
that uh, rise up for peace aims to provide educators with tools and resources they need to integrate peace integrity and the rule of law into their teachings the key will be collaboration and taking forward the learnings to be implemented in schools through workshops training sessions and resource materials we may empower our teachers educators to create engaging and impactful lessons that resonate with students collaboration with and between institutions and individuals is crucial in this endeavor as it allows us to reach a wider network of educators and students across the country from cbse as director of training i offer my support to this cause i'm proud of i'm i'm proud to announce our commitment to supporting rise up for peace cbse central board of secondary education can work closely with you know dc and partner schools to develop capacity building programs that may align with the goals of this initiative additionally we can help facilitate knowledge sharing sessions webinars and forums where educators can exchange best practices and innovative ideas together let us rise to challenge of educating our youth on the principles of peace integrity and rule of law here i invite all educators schools and stakeholders to join and support this journey towards a brighter more equitable future thank you for giving me time here and cbse at cbse doors are open for collaboration let's work together thank you very much thank you dr ram shankar ram thank you very much sir thank you i believe all of us are overwhelmed because majority of us teachers here and sir you said front line champions so much of power you has give you have given us sir so much of energy you have given in our wings we'll fly high for the cause of peace and of course nep 2020 is close to the heart of every every school every educator who's affiliated with cbse otherwise we are all for peace sir we humans love peace it's energy thank you so much sir an honor a pleasure thank you for all the the support you have promised the training sessions thank you sir right from here thank you we move on i take this opportunity now to invite our keynote speaker dr satya bhushan assistant professor statistics international relations division ncrt delhi sir we are we are waiting to listen to you it's the floor is all yours over to dr satya bhushan thank you ma'am thank you very much good evening everyone i hope yeah, i'm audible yes sir you are great great esteemed guests educators and partners it is indeed an honor to be here today at the launch of rise up for peace an initiative that holds tremendous promise for our educational landscape thank you to samarth patak and madam dhillan for convening us today thank you very much i'm glad to be part of the unveiling of rise up for peace a collaborative effort between unodc kamla nehru public school phagwara and our worthy educators partners such collective efforts are much required towards fostering peace integrity and the rule of law through education i welcome this initiative and happy to extend support to this initiative on behalf on on my personal behalf as well as on my institution behalf you will agree with me that in our rapidly evolving world the need for education on peace integrity and the rule of law has never been more pressing especially in context to youth so we have to empower our youth with knowledge and values we equip them to become agents of positive change and also protect them from risky behaviors so this objective is intricately linked to the principle outlined in india's national education policy 2020 which emphasizes the holistic development of students including their ethical and moral values 
So the policy advocates for an education system that promotes critical thinking, empathy, social responsibility, and global citizenship, all of which are central to objective of rise up for peace. By aligning with this national education policy 2020, rise up for peace ensures that its efforts are in harmony with India's broader educational goals, contributing to a more inclusive and value-driven education system. In this mission, the role of educator, you will agree with me, is central in shaping young minds and instilling in them the value, values of peace, integrity, and respect for the rule of law. Excuse me, sir, you're muted now. Please unmute yourself. Sorry, okay. sir, I had to, okay, yeah. Sir. Just, a, just a few seconds back, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, yeah. So, but to effectively impart these lessons to bring these in classroom teaching learning experiences, educators themselves require support, resources, and training in a way hand-holding. I'm glad to note that Rise Up for Peace seeks to bring in educator partners to share knowledge, resources, and expertise in good classroom practices to integrate such themes. Though the workshops, training modules, and curriculum frameworks, such efforts can be further strengthened, interactive platforms like these, where educators can share best practices, collaborate on innovative ideas, and access support is the key. As an integral part of India's educational framework, NCRT is committed to supporting educators and initiatives like Rise Up for Peace. UN ODC and NCRT have previously collaborated and we hope to build further this area. As you know, NCRT playing a crucial role in shaping the educational ecosystem in India for more than six decades particularly through its curriculum development and teacher training, and our textbooks are very famous, you all know that. So NCRT is contributing in a multifaceted way. For example, curriculum development. Curriculum development, I, just for the sake of you know our international uh, experts, I would like to inform you that curriculum development is mandated to NCRT in National Education Policy 2020. Similarly, textbooks development is a, is a huge task for NCRT, and we are do it, doing it for the decades. Teacher training, resource sharing. So NCRT will be happy to collaborate under this initiative to bring in the best expertise for partner schools, especially aligned with SDG 16. We will be happy to help facilitate online offline workshops and dialogues for teachers focusing on innovative teaching methodology for peace education. Some of the developed content could be, you know, uh, considered for use in different portals. I would like to mention one piece of work which NCRT has done in this particular area. NCRT has developed a book entitled Ways to Peace, a resource book for teachers, which is available in our, our portal. I'll forward uh, you all of you also. Thanks. I'm very excited with this opportunity to our educators with tools and knowledge they need to inspire the next generation of responsible global citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Satyabhushan. It was a pleasure listening to you. We educators are elated with all the support you intend to give it to us. Yes, role of educators is central and we need your support and we need your training. Thank you, sir. We are overwhelmed. We are touched and right from the core of our heart. All educators who are here are there to rise up for peace. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Now coming to the next point. <clears throat> what is Rise Up for Peace educational initiative? It's a journey. It's a transformative journey. Yes. It's a journey which all of us are going to take. And let's see who would be the target stakeholders in this. We'll be having the policymakers. Uh, we, we did have it very much there in the launch event. 
educational leaders, so many of you are there, the education heroes in the classroom, my boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and my beloved teachers, you're there always. Educators and of course, K-12 students from India, South Asia and beyond. Yes, what are the key objectives? Educator and student training and sensitization on SDG 60. Crime prevention and integrity in line with NEP 2020 is one of the key objectives. National, regional, and of course, international collaboration, which has already started. Engagement with policy ma uh, makers. Yes, we did uh, take the first step here. And of course, plenty of advocacy for this. Thank you so much. And then this journey is full of uh, uh, commendations, appreciation. We are working together and all educators, all uh, young people who have joined, all professors, everybody. See, everybody who part partners in this, who joins this is would be the partner for peace. So we have nearly 164, maybe more than that, who have joined in as partner for peace today. And all students would be the SDG 16 champions. That's what they are there for. We'll be having country peace ambassadors, global peace ambassadors. As we take this journey till December, we'll be unveiling one by one. Rise up for peace activities. What are we going to do in this? Of course, students involvement. And students are going to learn all about peace, about SDG 16. It will be art and advocacy using posters, music, videos, poems and podcasts. School community focused initiatives would be there, special assemblies, club related efforts and community outreach. Ideas for good, develop plan ideas to address SDG 16 related themes and tech for good. Create apps, web pages, or other tech tools to promote SDG 60. Very, very interesting journey and time lay ahead of us. Rise of peace, up for peace. What is the way forward? Educators, monthly dialogue series, teacher spotlight. Youth focus interactive dialogue on SDG 16. So it will be the youth spotlight. Podcast series on SDG 16. Round tables to be hosted in partner school, government institution to ideate and discuss incorporation of SDG 16 in education. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a collaborative journey. Experts from UNODC, Ken Peers, and educator mentor, we have so many stalwarts as I keep saying, leaders stand ready to provide guidance and support to participating school. Reach out and connect. We move on to mentoring and evaluation. Collect feedback from participants and document success stories. Every month we'll be having an e-newsletter which would be published with students' creative work. Structured activities would be there and all this would be incorporated in the e-newsletter which would be the prize position of the young boys and girls from schools. Virtual art gallery would also be there and um, that's how we go. And then technology would be used to the fullest. Technology for Rise of Puppies initiative, you just see, we'll be having everything. We'll be having Microsoft tools. We'll be having uh, Canva, Art Steps, YouTube, Minecraft forms. Uh, everything would be their co-pilot, chat GPT. Then visibility of the program, inclusion of influencers, senior officials, officials, educational leaders, etc. social media promotion for every activity, news coverage and joint op-eds, podcast series, showcasing of good practices at UNODC forums, and then showcasing school-led initiative on online web pages. Over to you, Samarth, the moderator. Yes, Samarth, over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Dillon. And uh, thank you for that overview. I think that gave uh, everyone a glimpse of what we seek to achieve. Of course, this is not an exhaustive list. We count on your ideas and your new, you know, sort of innovative thoughts around what can be done. But uh, as uh, Ma'am Dillon said, and, you know, uh, as, you know, the, the expertise that UNODC brings and the educator mentors would bring are all there for you. So please feel free to reach out and we can co-design, co-create these initiatives. 
Uh, before we move on to the next part, which is going to be very exciting, we do have very eminent educators uh, with us and a young girl uh, who have been the driving force of integrating SDG 16 related education already in the classrooms. And it would be an interesting conversation to understand how this is done, what is being done, and uh, get some successful examples, uh, which would maybe set the ground for the latter part of our initiative. Uh, before we do that, let's have a group photograph. I think that would be very nice because we are all fresh right now. Mm -hmm. So may I request everyone to switch on the camera, as many as of you as possible, so that we can take a nice group photograph. And as the experience goes, it's usually the third photograph that is the best. So we'll take a, a <laughs> batch of three photographs with everyone smiling. Please switch on your cameras. We we'll just give it three more seconds before everybody sets their hair and gets ready to look at the frame. <laughs> last, last call, please switch on your cameras for those who are comfortable in doing so. All right, the gallery is increasing. Uh, I request uh, uh, Ms. Dillon's team to please let us know how whatever, how they are taking the photos. I will take one for the records anyway. So all right, so please look into the cameras and we take photo number one. <laughs> one, two, and three. All right, it's going to be very hard to check in this huge gallery who blinked and who didn't. <laughs> all right, just one second, just one second. Uh, the next one, if I can, if I can request you to please put a thumbs up or uh, maybe a V sign, it'll be great. It'll look like an action. So, all right, I go with a thumbs up. Ah, then we go for thumbs up only. Thumbs up, all right. One, two, and three. All right. I think this one is pretty perfect. So <laughs> let's leave it at this one. But I'll take one more. Just give me one more second, please. You don't realize, but I think this is the toughest job right now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just one more thing. All right. All right. Another one with a thumbs up. OK. All right. One, two and three. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this. Uh, we'll now move on to the next session. As I told you, we have an eminent panel right now of, of experts who are joining in, and uh, we would like to start immediately. You know, we we know who they are. They are the uh, they are very eminent, and uh, I think we'll just straight away head into the panel discussion. So my question to the panelists. Um, is let's start with a basic question. What is the one core value or competency that you feel education must develop in young people in our quest for a better and a more peaceful world? One word or one value or one competency that you feel uh, should be developed by education. Mr. Dillon, can we start with you? Thank you, Mr. Pater. It's such a pleasure to be here this evening, and I'm grateful that you invited me. Uh, the one word which I think is non-negotiable and is a must-have is the word empathy. Right. That's a very powerful word. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dillon. So empathy. And uh, while we ask the panelists, I would also request the audience to maybe type the words that come into your mind. Uh, we move on to Ms. Singh. Ms. Rita Singh. Yes. Yeah. So I think one trait I would put it that way is learning to put yourself in other shoes is most important thing. That probably brings in empathy, brings in tolerance, brings in understanding, culture diversity, understanding everything. So uh, that trait is what is probably we would endeavor to build among our students. Absolutely. Uh, how about Ms. Lorraine? Lorraine, Miss Lorraine, can you hear me? 
Um, I also agree that empathy is very important to establish for the children and for the adults in the world. And I think being able to, to feel for uh, about somebody else is very important. Very important aspect. All right. Thank you. So empathy and, of course, connecting and compassion in a way is, uh, is a key quality. Ms. Jayant, what would be your, your word? For one, for yeah, one competency. Good evening, everybody. It's so wonderful to be part of this uh, distinguished panel and being part of everybody here who are, uh, you know, ri Rise Up for Peace initiative. I, I feel myself, I consider myself to be very fortunate to be part of this panel. Uh, well, for me, of course, empathy was also on my first list, but since it's been taken by two already, I thought I should say even conflict resolution is a skill we would want to teach children. Very important indeed. Times we live in. Thank you so much, Ms. Jayant. Uh, Mr. Yoshiro Miyata, one word. But, okay. Uh, how about uh, resilience? Resilience, yes. A very powerful word, resilience. And uh, Medha, from a youth perspective, what would be the one thing that you feel educators, your teachers, I think that's a very tricky question. You're surrounded by educators right now. But one thing that you would you think is the most important part of education, one quality or one competency. Sir, I would, I think, in fact, say two words. One first, in my opinion, would be inclusivity, inclusivity of spaces and one competency. If you would ask me a quality that I would want would be responsibility. We have educators would be me more responsible and aware educators. I think that's one quality that I would want the students as well as the educators to have. It's, it can be offensive for some, but I think it's the <laughs> need of the hour. Of Thank course. You. No, so very powerful words. I think very revealing insights, even in the chat box. Uh, if you look at the other educators who are typing in, I think they're very revealing insights. So in the wake of this, I'll come back to Medha because uh, she she is, of course, our youth uh, voice today. Uh, Medha, I know that you have varied experience in working with other youth groups and with other young people. Uh, what are some of the key challenges that you feel young people face today? And uh, why do you think education on SDG 16 matters or should matter or should it matter? So, sir, I would just give a very brief background because I will keep all my points very crisp. Yes. I would like to give a background that when I'm, when I'm representing young people, I'm representing young people of South Asian countries, especially India. So India having a colonial history, the injustices that has happened here is more structural and it's more institutionalized. And that sort of adds on to the problem, which again, you asked me to answer that young people face. So I think that the young people, what the problem they face overall in one word would be in security now you can club it with anyone insecurity of jobs of their opportunities of their livelihoods of uh, coupled with a lot of day-to-day -day violences that happens gender-based violence domestic violence and corruption which is ever more relevant or glaring in a country like india where there's lack of access and infrastructure so what i think sir uh, the importance as, as you said of education on peace and integrity why we need is that when we face these particular problems of the world, we need to inculcate these themes in the curriculums because we lack value based learning, which NEP also envisions. So what I feel is that when these young people become change makers, when they just are not confined to their classrooms, where there is more action based learning, I think there where the importance lies and where we learn about how not wait for someone to take the charge, but become the change itself. It starts with community. So I think this is where sir, the problem starts is with the insecurity and once they Realize it, we come to the uh, you know action part. Very, very, very interesting. Very interesting. Absolutely. Um, uh, powerful. So Mr. Dhillon, Ms. Singh, and Ms. Jayant uh, are, of course, renowned and towering educators with a tremendous body of work in India. And we have Professor Miyato and Ms. Leo from Japan and the US. Uh, my question to you is, based on what you know, Medha mentioned as a you know, the, given the uh, different sort of challenges that our young people face, um, can you give us any specific examples of how SDG 16 has been integrated in the classroom, uh, how you have worked around these issues uh, in your experience? Let's start with uh, Ms. Singh. Ms. Singh, I think you're muted, you're muted. Yes. I love the way how Medha put it up, and uh, it really, I'm. Uh, it also gives us a lot of hope that if the, if the uh, 
um, the want and desire of the youth is in this direction, then yes, it gives us uh, some purpose up in life. And I think you started, Samath, you started with a sense of purpose of, for everybody. So uh, sometimes, you know, what happens, Medha, the educators also get lost in trying to do their job and trying to do it well and uh, getting frustrated on the go, whether the youth really wants them to be uh, this involved or not. So uh, uh, absolutely no blame game happening here. If I have to look into, we all know that the when we look in the history, whatever has happened, all those uh, uh, moments that we're ashamed of, the dark moments that we uh, that have happened have been when the rule of law has been missing. So that brings us to how important it is to teach what is rule of law. Sometimes the uh, just teaching them legal ways to uh, follow a certain path or trying to teach them or preach them rather what lies in the legal domain of wherever you are, whether we're talking about cyber or we're talking about a simple classroom rules that we try to talk about. It's very, very, it's a very uh, preachy kind of setup if you really start talking the laws, right? But if you're putting it as a justice, as a fairness, as a model of, uh, when you start modeling the fairness as justice yourself, you did mention that I am talking uh, for the educators as well as the students, very rightly put it, very beautifully put it. So uh, if I look, we are not just talking about the curriculum development, we, we go there later, when we come to the setting up of a conducive classroom environment. Are we modeling the fairness and justice? It is always in our minds. Are we putting a positive engagement opportunities for all the students who are in the class? It is always in our minds. Is the classroom set up thoughtful? Inclusivity is being looked into? It is always in our mind. Are our teaching methods participatory? It is always in our minds. If the educator or the person in the classroom looks into these basic or and not just looks into it sets up these classrooms before the classroom starts okay next 35 minutes children this is what will be the uh, classroom rules so those 35 minutes very well define what will happen in the full day and one typical day in a school very well defines how the curriculum will be transacted in the entire year so all these are important how do we pedagogy uh, is taken up and then of course selecting the teaching resources is very important I can always say that, okay, we did the SDG integration lesson plans. Yes, of course, we did. We brought up a journal. Yes, we did, where the best practices were showcased, not just from India, but from Romania and Pakistan and other countries also. But these are these are kind of talking big and it becomes overwhelming for any educator to emulate. Our purpose for these kind of projects is to uh, make it believable, uh, feel connected. Yes, okay, this particular school did it or the group of schools did it. We can also do it. So I would like to tell every Everybody, whatever we try to pick up, I mean, I, if you look at the UNODC's uh, website, there's such lovely uh, uh, toolkit that is already present there. You just pick up those booklets which are for the primary educators, which are for the secondary educators, and you will have ample ideas from there to actually pick up from. Uh, whether you're selecting a teacher resource or you're even selecting your learning outcomes to define your lesson plans. You simply put it in a very simpler manner, like understand the threats and real risks of crime and violence. It sounds big to me. How do I bring it down in a smaller uh, words like the child understands the rules and expectations at the home and school. So basically, whatever we do in our classroom, we try to make it believable. And the teacher connects and the student connects with those competencies, so-called competencies that we are trying to build in the uh, students. Uh, right. I think I'll come back. I mean, I don't want to take away other speakers' no. time. Uh, I'm mindful of the time. Yeah, yeah over no, to no. others. But very, very insightful, Rita Ji, and I really appreciate your comments on breaking down, uh, you know, the work that we do and sort of, the, I think the one word would be simplify, simplify yes. uh, the language, yes. simplify the format. Uh, I would now request uh, Mr. Dillon to come in, uh, you know, to share his insights because, uh, of course, the Lawrence School Sanar is so prestigious, so well known, but it's a boarding school. And uh, there are different challenges around that as well when it comes to young people. So how have you been working around these themes, sir? So, Mr. Pathak, uh, I'll, I'll start with the basis of living together as a community, right? So when we are in a boarding school, it's a community of learners. 
and roughly four months, seven days a week, uh, 24 hours a day, we are interacting. And I would say that the key is a student leadership. And of course, every adult in the community has to have a role in which we, you know, walk the talk. We are role models, just like Ma'am Singh just said. And one very powerful uh, realization, and we can't deny it, is what Ms. Medha Tusti just said about structures, about inheritance. And, you know, trauma is also an inher inheritance but we always have a choice. So there's no way that generations of traumas can't be, you know, shrugged off and you know, thrown into the deep sea. So it starts with expectations. And the moment we have the right expectations for the right reasons with good intentions, the students and the entire community, whether adult or sub-adult, will understand that and we will work together. And, you know, in education, there's a very uh, powerful principle called the Pygmalion principle. So it's about expectations. So when we expect good things to happen, when we empower our students, when we give them responsibility, but also accountability and trust, they never let us down. And I'll give you an example. There can be any uh, institution with any kind of inheritance, which can be negative or positive. But the moment you said positive expectations, trust people, and you say that we can make it better, it happens. But see, the key in a school, especially a residential school, is the role of students. And I would say student agency, starting with student voice. And there are power structures, but we can make those power structures something which is enlightened and not, you know, uh, repressive and uh, something which is not regressive. For example, I would say leading with heart. It starts with leading with heart. And I would say even a child in grade five or four has the potential to be a leader. We just have to let them lead. And sometimes they come up with better ideas than adults. Also, it's about culture. And see, Ms. Medha Tusti, you shared about a culture which is repressive and which is not inclusive. But you can also have a culture in which no matter who it is, whether child, whether adult, whether part of the school management or a part of school support, they are respected. And that's the only way to go. So, you know, when you work from, say, a culture of bullying to a culture of mentoring, a culture of caring, so someone who's senior starts with helping a junior, whoever the junior is, whether child or whether colleague, they start respecting the senior. The moment it is out of fear, it will fall apart and it will then rankle. It will become, you know, a very sorry state of affairs before you know it. So I would say, let us all be the change. Mahatma Gandhi's words, it's a mantra, be the change. And the other thing is, find a way. It's always possible to find a way, no matter how dark the situation is. If we try, we can find a way. Once we find a way, or others find a way, it becomes part of a new culture. And that is what we have to, uh, I would say, make into a manifestation and reality. Right. I think very revealing, uh, Mr. Dillon. And uh, of course, we know the different kinds of activities that uh, keep happening around, you know, in your school and under your leadership. And building that community of learners uh, and giving that leadership, even to the most junior students, uh, is, is absolutely I essential. So thank you so much. May I request everyone to keep their uh, microphones on silent, please? Thank you. But very revealing insights, uh, Mr. Dillon. I now move to Ms. Geeta Jayant, uh, who, of course, uh, is again a very leading educator from the southern part of India and doing exceptional work uh, around uh, these themes that we talk about. So, Ms. Jayant, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Samarth. I think uh, just in the interest of time, probably I'll just go with three examples, uh, which we have been very intentional, right? We, we as a school, Across from K to 12 is where we, uh, in our curriculum itself, we map all this SDG 17. So we just made it that, you know, through the curriculum, through the year, at least two to three SDGs are plugged into our curriculum. And uh, so uh, uh, just because this is about SDG 16, I would say yeah, SDG 16 definitely has been one of the most favorite ones because it's about honoring the wellness of all humanity. So having said that, just three examples, uh, and I know some of you have been part of some of the initiatives, like we did one on bye-bye bias uh, with the children, and it was about having balanced portrayal of world issues. And, you know, especially during COVID time, and we were part of the lockdown learner series, and we saw that, you know, there was so much of misinformation and disinformation being spread, and how our kids came out with this initiative of, you know, creating a website, 
and uh, ensuring that uh, misinformation is there was a myth which was broken and apart from that also as a part of that extension of that we had invited the cyber chief of cyber uh, un cyber chief mr uh, neil wash right he, he he was also part of this discussion uh, you know reaching out to the larger community uh, along with that i think uh, the the other one also which i think you were part of it was the kiara skuro where we had a full uh, fledged block printing where we tried to represent the multicultural collage that was part of the indian diversity so that was one another one which we uh, year on year take part is a cnn initiative which is called modern day slavery and that's my, uh, it's called the my freedom day that happens in the month of february and march and children from across k to 12 take part and you know they and it's mostly related to exploitation or violence or discrimination against students so these are something which our children have done and uh, it just gets the entire school community together to make sure that we stand up for peace and uh, inclusivity and uh, uh, you know integrity so th these are just few examples but this is just few chosen ones that's all i could say so thank you yeah very interesting and uh, you know that you are sitting with a very uh, you know eminent panel of educators when you end up taking notes so i have a diary i'm taking notes of all the uh, nice ideas that are being shared uh, these were examples from india these were insights from india we now move on india and beyond and we have two very eminent educators from the us and japan uh, with a, again a substantial body of work around these themes so uh, may i invite uh, uh, lorraine to share your insights or would you like to do this together well uh, will we be able to present our our uh, presentation uh, ms dillon yes 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 yes, yes. all right okay this you'd love to see we would love to see the see what you have done so great okay thank you thank you very much so we Yoshiro Miyata and myself worked on the World Peace Song Project. It was a collaboration between a singing group called the Women of the World and the World um, Museum members. Next slide. This is uh, Yoshiro in Japan and myself in the U.S. and a team of workers in uh, Chukyu University who worked on the audio files for the music. And we're going to take you now. Um, next slide, Yoshiro. We're taking you to the World Peace Song Map, which was uh, programmed by Yoshiro Miyata. Each of these little uh, peace dubs links to a song that students wrote lyrics for that basically say what peace means to them. And Miyata Sensei is going to link us to the map so we can hear a couple segments of the music. This is a group in uh, the Dominican Republic, who during the lockdown. That's great. Gives you a sense that, and this is uh, in Australia, in Perth, Australia. Oops. This is always a great challenge. Advertisements. <laughs> yeah, that is. A, uh, these are children in in Perth, Australia, who are using um, Australian sign language and doing uh, what peace means to them. All of the children across the world have five melodies, and they write lyrics for those melodies. We are one family. We have one more, you're sure? Or is that just the two, right? How about this? Oh, yeah, this one too with the OM. This is in, uh, in New Delhi. Oh, gosh. That's great. Yeah. So 
as I said, each of the little uh, peace stubs links to a song. And next slide. The project started in 2014 when I was at a concert in Boston. I saw a group called the Woman of the World and they talked a lot about peace and I recognized that their mission for peace was very similar to the World Museum mission of peace, which is collaboration with people around the world, integrating music or integrating scratch projects. We had a workshop with the Women of the World and got to know them uh, well. Miyata Sensei commissioned the Women of the World to write a peace song for the World Museum. And they wrote, We Are One Family, which is what this whole project is about. It's based on uh, the We Are One Family. Next slide. And here you can see the people in Paramjit School with SDG around their neck and they were singing the, their uh, version of the, their peace song, which is the Goal 16, Peace, Justice and Strong Institutions. Next slide. So the goal of our project is we'd like to connect people around the world with wishes for peace. These are children in Indonesia in a middle school. So across the world, they all had the same goal with the lyrics at the end of the song being, we are brothers and sisters, we are one family. But the lyrics uh, depended on their, what they decided would be a representation of their um, peace in their communities. Next slide. So based on the World Peace Song, they wrote the lyrics to express what peace means to them. These are children in Malawi who recently sang. They didn't have access to a video recorder or they didn't have access to a um, music, but they were able to do it a cappella, and they did a really nice job. You can, we'll give you the link for this map and you'll be able to listen to them singing a cappella. They did a beautiful job. Next slide. So we had in 2015, 15 participating schools and beginning in 2018, we have had 94 participating schools uh, and each of those is represented on the map. This is a school from Boston College High School. Uh, of young men uh, singing the peace song. Next slide. We had 42 countries represented with over 2,000 students participating. And these are uh, Mam Paramjeet students in um, her school. Next yeah. slide. Very positive feedback across the world. They had, and from Kenya, Maxwell Kiese, wrote, it was a, a noble initiative in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, she said it, it's an important vision. And in uh, Paramjeet School, it's a music brought them closer, fostering a memorable and harmonious experience. And all of these, uh, slot, these songs are available on the map. Next slide. It was a great challenge. In this particular one on the top right, you see children playing, um, accompanying their their uh, song with music. And in South Africa, they were very proud to be on the map. In Turkey, it was a worldwide peace and multicultural project that they liked. And um, Brother Peter Tabici uh, said, we need to promote tolerance. We need peace in our society. And thanks so much for a wonderful initiative. So it was very positive across the world. Uh, it's a project that challenges the kids and the educators. And I think they all come out feeling very proud of the opportunity that they had to work on the project. And thanks to Miyata Sensei's programming of the uh, map, it makes it even more special to be able to see it across the globe and see you're part of a community. Next slide. Go ahead into the next slide. This is the woman of world, the world again. Uh, as you can see, the people who wrote the music are from America via Haiti, Japan, India, uh, and Italy. So they're a multicultural group. Next slide, please. This is a, um, Miyata Sensei, you wanna say this is a, a group in Aichi. When they came to Aichi, you had a workshop? Yeah, we had a concert in Nagoya in Japan uh, where we premiered this uh, World Peace Song on the stage as a local audience. And uh, 
the the, the audience uh, uh, yeah it was sung everyone was uh, on the stage singing the song it's a very nice uh, uh, concert and uh, we had comments from our partners all around the world wow great great thank you thank you so much sir and as you can see the um this is Peter Tabici with his students singing. We are uh, brothers and sisters. We are one family. Next slide. And we'll just quickly go through these slides. You can see the English and the, this is Nepali, working together, coming up with lyrics that are meaningful to them. Uh, and they, they uh, I'll let you know, since they just go through these slides in the element of time and, um, you can see it, uh, it's a, it reached a global audience, lots of work on everyone's part, but I think uh, we feel very pleased with the results and, and um, are very proud. And Yoshiro, you can say what, how we can achieve peace. Uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, the World Peace Song Project had to stop for a while during COVID because we could not sing together. But COVID showed us how unsustainable it is to rely on global market and labels. If we ne neglect the value of local resources and pe people, our society becomes unstable, which may drive us to conflicts. Instead, we can make things in our community to connect local people and resources. That way, we can create more stable and sustainable local community. So in the world, Peace on project by sharing our values globally, we can help each other to make our communities sustainable and peaceful. So I'd like to design uh, some new uh, maps which allow the partners to have dialogues, to explain the meanings of their peace lyrics and ask each other questions about their lyrics and stories in the process of making them. That way, uh, they can exchange their culture and the historical backgrounds behind the lyrics. This will lead to better mutual understanding of our social cultural backgrounds. And I hope we can view the world peace in a global perspective. Thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lorraine. And uh, You're welcome. okay. Yeah, go on to the next slide just quickly. Um, that's the contact information if you're interested in it. And then finally, um, a group of, next slide, a group of boys from uh, one of the partners who were singing the peace song here. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to share our peace song with you. Beautiful. I think a very interesting initiative indeed. And thank you, Professor Yoshiro and uh, Ms. Lorraine for sharing this. Uh, the good thing was, of course, the use of music, which instantly got many of us hooked uh, to this initiative. Music and the arts are actually very powerful enablers of peace, but also getting different cultures together, getting different students from different backgrounds together to work on something is, I think, uh, a very good model. Uh, for for such activities, and I'm sure that uh, many people would be very inspired uh, by, and many educators would maybe take this on, uh, you know, in the coming weeks and months that we work. So finally, as we close this discussion, I want to conclude with one last question that I want to pose to the panel very quickly. Um, what would be the? We have seen the different examples and the different sorts of insights that we have that have been shared in the panel. And my question is, what would be the one key aspect that uh, you think initiatives like Rise Up for Peace and the other, you know, initiatives around, uh, you know, peace, rule of law and bringing people together, what should such initiatives in education emphasize and focus on? What is that one key thing that you would like such initiatives to actually focus on? And maybe one line of advice or one call to action for those in the education space uh, who are looking to do something in this uh, in this direction? Uh, we'll start with Mr. Dillon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pathak. Uh, just just a quick reflection. Uh, our association started in the pandemic with lockdown learners, and it's gone from strength to strength. So 
we now have SDGs not only in the classroom, but in practice, not only 16, which we started with, and I'm very happy. We started with 16, with rule of law, yes. with strong institutions, yeah. but we have it in all fields. Now, one very important thing which I would love to share with everyone is it starts with integrity. It is rooted in ethics and values, but it is compassion that fuels it. So if we if we do exactly what we would like others to do to us, the world becomes a much fairer place. And I feel it is up to us now. It is our generation, I would say, which can make a change, which will at least impact three or four generations. And it is the students. The moment we lead on change, which is positive an outcome, but something which includes every young person that will go forward many more generations. So it's a bit like planting an oak, which will mature in the next 150 years. But if we don't do it now, we are losing an important opportunity. I would say make a mistake, but be on the right side of the right decision and do it now. That is what I would say. Right after this lovely webinar, let us go out into the field, whether it's night, whether it's day, wherever we are, and be the change. That is my two uh, bits to share. Very, very powerful. And uh, absolutely, I mean, we should go from thoughts to action and actually go and, you know, start working around these themes, but very, very powerful. And also compassion. I think that's a very key thing that we should be, uh, you know, hoping to ignite in young people with our activities. Uh, moving on to Ms. Jayant. Uh, I would say, you know, uh, though, as uh, Mr. Dillon said, we've also been uh, from, I think, uh, during COVID time onwards, we started integrating all the SDGs, yeah. feeling yeah. very conscious of our responsibility. Uh, but with today's takeaway and listening even to Lorraine, I felt, I think as a countrywide, if we could all decide that this year, let's focus on SDG 16 as a theme integration across all, uh, and then come out with something across all the schools, at least present here today, come up and contribute to this music. I think that'll be a great uh, way as an initiation. And we are with you, Ms. Lorraine, next time. I'm already looking at connecting with you for that. Very nice. Fantastic. Uh, Ms. Singh? Uh, yeah, yeah, Samarth. Uh, rightly said, I mean, uh, it's not just the call to action time. I think it should not translate to, uh, I mean, I'll, I'm probably putting it in a little different words than Himmat did. He said that's a practice time. I mean, be the change. So I think from call to action, it is time to translate to call to part practice, call to participate, call to adopt. So actually do it. And if I look at the uh, curriculum booklets also with the UNO DC, we also talk about taking a learning domains from learning about to act, uh, learning, uh, learning to le what it is all about to learning to do. So it's a time to start doing things instead of just kind of talking about it. And um, certain takeaways for me or certain reminders for me, if I have to look at it, yeah, that uh, yes, uh, bring in your policies, which are very, very transparent and let the whole stakeholder, every stakeholder of the school know about those. Then that will ensure the practice, which is in line with not just with the human rights and the it, it just not just supports the rule of law. It kind of gives those seeds to the in the young minds that uh, not just holding school leaders and teachers accountable. We are holding the group D. We are holding the students. We are holding the parents. We are holding everybody accountable in every act of us. What is happening within the uh, four walls or the campus of our schools? So uh, providing meaningful opportunities to the learners is what is very very uh, loud and clear and. Uh, to the fore in my mind at uh, after this session with everybody. So yeah, thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Ms. Singh. I think that's that's very impactful. Uh, I move on to uh, Ms. Lorraine and Professor Yoshiro. One takeaway or one call to action that you would like to give to uh, educators here, or one thing that you would like this initiative to actually bring out or focus on. Yoshiro, do you want to go? Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, I think a uh, very difficult challenge for everyone of, the, of us is that uh, uh, world peace and SDGs are very 
uh, global concept and uh, seems very remote from our daily lives, what we do daily. But uh, our lives are supported by all the living things and all the people on this uh, earth. And uh, the challenge is to actually connect our daily lives, what uh, we do, what we eat and um, act every day to the whole world. And well, that's that's uh, one very big challenge we have to uh, overcome. Right, absolutely. Ms. Lorraine? I think that uh, one of the successes or the schools that had the most success in the project that we did was were schools that built a community around the project. It wasn't just the one teacher that was spearheading the project and saying, I'm going to do this. It was getting the principal involved, getting the music teacher involved, getting parents involved. I know Paramjeet had parents who watched the presentation when it was done. So building a community around the project, I think, is, is would be the key for us when we were working with the project. And the Very community well, also yeah. of teachers that were involved, that which was helpful. Absolutely. Now, one thing that we believe uh, within the UN space and especially at UNODC is that nothing about young people without young people. So we started the dialogue by hearing uh, a young person talking, and now we want to conclude also with a young person talking. So, Medha, over to you. What is that one thing that you would like all of us as educators to emphasize on through this initiative? And uh, what would be your call to action to educators? This is your time to be the teacher to the teachers. So I think from a very young perspective, the world is full of competition and a competition. And I think from day one, what I feel that it's students have taught that, you know, you need to like Sir even Dhilon sir said behave a certain way or, you know, the rules and regulations there. But I think it is so money centric or it's so, you know, I would say competition centric that the behavioral change doesn't come from young people. So I think one key takeaway will be behavioral change where the way we have these inclusive spaces, where we have these spaces where the no descriptive identities where don't we have to hide it where we can be like even Rita Singh ma'am said where we can transparent where we can you know put forward our opinions like even now I know it's it's very candid of me but I think that this is how we can normalize these conversations not just here not just in elite spaces but in spaces where where we you know students come from marginalized communities where we break down or simplify like again Rita Singh ma'am said where we break down these concepts in their own languages in their own dialects where the world peace song could maybe you know sung in Know, language of a tribal we can have a birsa munda song or any such songs where they feel belonged and i think that is where the challenge lies and last but not the least i think real life narratives matter a lot if a, if a change comes when i see a person like samad sir whose journey has been from someone coming from a town then it inspires us more than a person who i might not relate a lot so i think in that case a behavioral change happens so i think that will be a major key takeaway and like everyone i think emphasize the idea of vasudev Kutumbakam. Indeed, we are a family and with only collaboration and good practices, we'll be able to create a very better and an inclusive world for each one of them. Thank you. I think a very, 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 very nice, uh, Medha. Very, very moving. So, of course, a, a fantastic panel. Really thankful to all, all of you for joining in for this panel discussion. And uh, I think very, very powerful insights. And we have taken notes of it and we will be, uh, you know, connecting with you. Uh, I would also, before I hand over the mic to, back to Ms. Dillon, I would also like to emphasize that we had Dr. Ram Shankar, uh, you know, addressing us. We had Dr. Satya Bhushan addressing us, both policymakers, both within the policy space. And uh, of course, NCRT and CBSE both are the apex bodies in many ways. So, um, uh, Dr. Bhushan, I, uh, you know, great insights shared from this panel and we do hope to connect with you and we will seek your guidance uh, you know dr ram shankar as well as dr bhushan we will need your guidance and support for a lot of things that we do and we do count on your support dr bhushan in case you would like to say anything after you know, or reflect on anything experienced educators and young uh, the youth you know Veda especially I mean, I'm 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 moved to listen to all you know 
so much of work you are doing on this particular SG16. I, I, I personally, I assure you that I, whatever I can do, I mean, I'll be with you always. And with any schools, any school uh, want any kind of, you know, support from NCRT, I'll put it to my authority and assure you that you will certainly get it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Texera. I think uh, a starting of a journey is important and it's important to start well. And I think for what I listen from the reflections I, I took, I think we are starting in the right direction and I'm very inspired for what we can achieve together. So let's work on the next steps. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I hand over the mic back to Ms. Dillon. Uh, Ms. Dillon? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes. You first want to be quiet so that you don't create noise and then you forget. So, so what next? So coming next month, we'll be having the Educator Spotlight on 29th. March is the month when examinations are going on. So we'll focus on the educators. And from April onwards, we'll have all the activities focusing our students and the teacher educators. The teachers can look into it and uh, guide them. And of course, everything would be very clear. And then we, we can finalize it in the month of March itself. And of course, we'll start with the podcast also. The ideas would be exchanged during the on 29th and Rise Up for Peace web spaces may be created by the school so that whatever they do, they can upload it over there. And may ladies just, and gentlemen. Yes, yes. sorry, ma'am. May I just come in here for one second uh, yes. to say that uh, any any guidance you need while designing activities or while uh, you know thinking of what can be done in schools, we are all here. Please do feel free to connect with us and um, very happy to support uh, the interventions. OK, thank you, Samar. And look, uh, if, if I if I see this slide, we have 618 educators who have registered for this. The number of students who have been registered by these educators are 11,650. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the launch. Uh, countries who have registered, who are participating at 28 in number, school registered at 169. Miles to go and nobody can stop us. Uh, we are here, the leaders, the change agents, the educators, the educators of, of different countries, and we are a force to reckon with. With the support of CBSC, NCRT, UNODC, I think we can do wonders for this uh, world, local to global, we'll move on. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You. Thank over to Samarth, uh, the final line, Samarth. No, no, ma'am. Thank you so much. And thank you for all of you for joining in. Thank you to Dr. Satyabhushan from NCRT for his continued guidance and support. Uh, yes. Trust me, meeting him is a different experience. Uh, it's like being in the being in the midst of a banyan tree, which is, of course, like uh, most of the other educators, uh, Mr. Dhillan, Ms. Jayant, Ms. Paramjit Dhillan, uh, Ms. Rita Singh, uh, Medha, and uh, Lorraine and Professor Yoshiro, of course, and all of you who are joining in, Dr. Ram Shankar from CBSC has been a huge pillar of support. Uh, and uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining in. Uh, I would also like to say that the numbers that were shared, um, were it's just the launch today. And just before the launch, we have, it's all an effort of the last 10 days, 15 days, I think, and so much, uh, so much of response, such a great response has already been received. We do count on your support to act as amplifiers and multipliers and connect others also to this cause, because in this cause, we need partnerships and we need more collaborations. So with that, I will thank you all again and looking forward to meet you all very soon. Thank you so much, Ms. Dillon, for your support. You have been the true leader behind this and we are very grateful to you. Thank you so much. With this, we come to the close of the meeting, but we have some informal chit chats. If anybody wants to say something, yes. you can go ahead and speak. I see some educational leaders here. Uh, Aarti, in, uh, uh, Aarti is there. Ms. Sopti is there, another uh, education leader. Would you like to yeah. unmute yourself and say something? It, it, it. 
Ms. Aarti, would you like to say something? Hi, ma'am. Good afternoon. Your contribution to the cause is really, really admirable, ma'am. You are yeah. unparalleled. Good job, Samarth. Simply like uh, you are the people who cannot be summed up in words. Hats off to you, ma'am. It, it's the collective effort, you know. I keep saying we own this project. Each one is a proud owner of this project, and together we're going to ma yeah. march forward. Thank you, Aarti, for joining. I find exactly, Bushra. Exactly, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. I find Bushra also. Bushra from Pakistan. Would you like to say a line or two, please? Assalamu alaikum, everyone from Pakistan. Great to be with you all. And when I joined with the struggle, first I went to YouTube. Then I finally came to the uh, teams and Ma'am Rita was, uh, you know, talking at that very time. So uh, I was listening to Medha as well, Professor Yashiro and Lareen. And it was amazing to be a part of all these years with all these amazing educators. And great to be with you all once again. And inshallah, ta'ala, we'll definitely be making everyone, everywhere, a peaceful for each one of us, inshallah, ta'ala. <laughs> Lovely to hear you, Bushra, after yeah. ages. <laughs> yeah, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Jotsna, well, come on, say something. Go ahead, Jotsna, if it's possible. Otherwise, uh, we also, Ayappa, sir. Ayappa, would you like to say something? Uh, we have some educators from different countries. Would you like to unmute, uh, you know, the Good evening, everybody. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Ayappa. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I think it's a great start. Uh, it's our, we are the owners and we have to do, and we will, uh, you know, Along with other owners, we will uh, do. That's what uh, we can give the commitment to Samarth and uh, VN uh, people. So we do. We already did, and uh, the success is with us. Uh, in the able leadership of uh, Paramjit Ma'am. So this time also we make a great record. I think so. Today also we had a record break uh, uh, participant. So same thing, we will have the whole year and we rock. Uh, and really we will, like what uh, Rita Ma'am uh, told, uh, the practicability, we go and apply, uh, you know, uh, the practice. We do the practice. We do it in our uh, classrooms. We do it in our community. We make the children to do it in their community also. So thank you so much for this wonderful Session. Thank you, Paranjit Ma'am. Thank you, Rita Ma'am. I think, Ayappa, we have personally tracked you, and you're actually one of the youngest uh, people who have made an impact. So, congratulations for that. If I may, uh, Paranjit Ma'am, I see Snailata Krishnan here, if she would like to speak. She is leading one of the schools of uh, this area for us. Snailata, are you around? Are you willing to speak? Otherwise, Paranjit Ma'am will grab the chance and give it to somebody else. <laughs> Okay, over to you, ma'am. I think she's uh, just... Okay, uh, may I share? Uh, it's a great chance to be uh, here and at the launch event, uh, pre-launch event also I have participated. So it was the great pleasure for last 10 days and uh, the days to go and miles to go as it is said. So the most important thing as it works with, uh, now we have the NCRT resource person over here. So in class 12, in Saturday book, we do have keeping quiet. And the projection which is given under that, uh, we haven't thought that this can be broadened to the global level. So we have been coordinating with each other now, and it has reached to such a level where the students are going to, be, because they are global citizens now, the borders have shrunk. So now it will be mattering for them to be a global citizen and making peace with everybody, local to global, being the ambassador to themselves for the world too. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah, sorry, dear. So Nirmala, are you there? Would you like to say something? 
together. Good evening, ma'am. Indeed, a great pleasure to meet ma'am again in this online platform. Uh, I attended the pre-launch and also I feel, I'm feeling so grateful to be in ma'am's project again.